In 2012, Mazda released the CX-5. In 2017, they released the latest CX-5. With the update came a whole lot of new features, not the least being the LED lights, active lane control, and blind spot monitoring. And the blind spot monitoring is, is particularly clever because it shows up on the windscreen and on the mirrors as well, as my assistant pointed out. I thought it didn't, but that's because I was concentrating on the heads up display. And with the key in my pocket, this car is really clever. I can lock and unlock the car without touching the button or I can just walk away like this. And this CX-5 is the first one to get both Kodo design and Skyactive technology in the same car. What's Kodo design, do I hear you ask? Let me tell you. What it made was sleek lines and this flowy business at the front. So the headlights are now mere slits in the front, they're LED, and they're really, really clever. Once you get above 100 kilometers an hour with them in fully automatic mode, they lift up like a little pair of eyelashes. And the cells individually switch on like little individual eyelashes doing something. This Mazda symbol, the flying wings, which is also an M, is solid, and that's where the radar lives for the radar cruise control. And you can see that the car's locked because the mirrors are folded, but if I just grip underneath, the tailgate will open to give you a particularly capacious boot area. The thing about the seats is they'll fold down 40, 40, 20, which means the middle bit can fold down just between the two back seats. The back seats also recline. The thing that I think is really clever about these Mazdas is the cargo hold cover attaches to the rear hatch and it goes up with the rear hatch so you don't have to bother sh mucking around with it when you're getting your stuff in and out. And so that the people inside can still see through the back, this little bit's net. I think that's genius. And when the hatch folds down, this little bit folds back in so the whole thing is covered and all of your bits and bobs that are in the boot are completely out of view. One of the things I hate most is when Japanese car makers, and they're all at it, they want the floor to be level with this lip at the back. And so they raise the level of the floor and there's all this wasted space underneath. Mazda CX-5 has not done that. This spare tire takes up the entire well, and I think that is a big bonus. Oh, look what I've just discovered. That's got bows written on it. They put the subwoofer right in the middle of the tire. That must make changing a spare tire pretty interesting because you'd have to unplug it. But I did wonder where all the doof, actually you wondered where all the doofing was coming from. Yeah. That's where the doofing was coming from. Now you can see in the back these seats are pretty comfortable. There's a little issue though, like the middle person has slightly less support than the rest of the seats and you can see that as high as the seats are, my knees are still sitting fairly high and they're also only a few centimetres from the seat in front. Admittedly this seat is a long way back. Let me slide over. Ah. Oh, actually, that's a little bit better. See how much seat, see how much space is between my knees and the seat in front when I'm in a drive that's not so greedy for front seat space? <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you. <laughs> We've got a, a map pocket. Again, when was the last time you saw somebody under a million with a map? So, to start the car, Again, with the key in my pocket, all I have to do is press the start button. Everything comes to life, the air conditioning comes on, and the infotainment system goes through its little dance. Now, the good, there's a good thing and a bad thing about this infotainment system. It locks while the car's moving, and that means that you can't make any changes to the screen once you start driving. You've got to use this thing down here. Come down here. Whilst this system is very easy to use, it is a little bit on the cumbersome side when it comes to using CarPlay. The good thing about the air conditioning controls, which were one of the things that got redone during the very small update, was they neatened up the control panel a bit. And you can sync your individual temperature controls, which I think is really important. 
When you're in the car on your own, the last thing you want to be doing is ginning around with two separate controls. The other thing that this car has, and I noticed it uh, with my companion here, telling me that the new uh, Apple update brought some CarPlay updates. Would you like to see them? Would you like to see them? Yes. You can't shake the camera because it just won't shake. So let's enable CarPlay. So you can see that the phone's now been plugged into the correct USB. There's two USB outlets in the center bin, but you've got to plug it into the right one. Only one is connected to CarPlay. Both will charge. So you click the agree button. So the new CarPlay, the best thing about it is you've got multiple things on your screen instead of just having the one. Now you'll notice I can still go to individual things while the car's stopped. The second we start moving, all of that goes tits up. So while you're not driving, you can go into the individual uh, uh, applications really, really easily just by pressing the screen. When you are driving, you've got to use this central control system down between the two front seats. Not bad, not too shabby. Let's get on the road. Oh, no cut, no, no seat belt. We can't have passengers with no seat belts. Put your seat belt on. Put your seat belt on. Now you can see that there is a whole bunch of options depending on whether you want the Sky Active Automatic or the Sky Active Drive or whatever it is, manual. Let's not kill ourselves. So if you add the two transmission, the four variants, you get a rather ludicrous 14 variations. 14! You don't even get that on most menus. At the moment I can see in front of me the heads-up display which I pointed out before. What I can also see is that the active steering is steering me between the lines and it is quite aggressive. You can turn all of this safety stuff on or off in the menu system. We're coming up to quite a sharp turn. It, and it is incredibly comfortable on this relatively smoothish road. The only thing that you can hear really is, well, the sound system rattling in the back seat, which I think is not bad. The one thing that I really like about Mazdas generally is their cabin design is absolutely delicious. My friend in the back said to me, oh, but look, you know, this, this car's not quite as nice as the new Mazda 3. And he's right. The new Mazda 3 really raised the bar, but what happens with all manufacturers is they bring out a car, bring out a particular design, and then they roll that out through the fleet. And so as the Mazdas are replaced, they'll replace it with that new Mazda 3 style interior. So the next one to get it will be Mazda 6. I do have a few problems with gloss black on interiors. Main reason for that is that it is really badly reflective in sunlight, and I've gotten a few flashes off this already but the lower the sun gets, the worse the problem is. It's annoying and there isn't really much you can do about it. Not only that, it gets badly scratched. The other thing about this interior is I've noticed there's a little bit of that genuine fake artificial metal, which as you know, I'm really not all that fussed on. What CX-5 will probably be used for is families or people with uh, you know, that want to get away for a weekend, just, you know, you and your honey in a couple of bags. I mean, suitcases, not old ladies. And what you'll want to do is a comfortable ride. You'll want to have a comfortable ride that's nice and quick and quiet. And to that end, this 2.5 turbo is the bee's knees. It really is the business. It's as sweet as a nut. I could probably get a few other bag of mixed metaphors and similes in there, I'm sure. Smooth as a baby's bum. Also smooth as a baby's bum is this rather excellent six-speed Sky Active automatic transmission. Now, what do you think of the ride on the highway? Uh, super comfortable. Super comfortable. So not just comfortable, super comfortable. Very quiet, very quiet. Fuel figures for the engine range is fairly impressive, especially when you're taking the combination rates into account. I'm going to set the smart radar cruise control. 
and I can now see that on the heads up display in front of me, the speed the cruise control set at, the speed I'm actually going, which is in this case the same, but it's also recognizing the speed sign and it's displaying that as well. I can see the lane marking, so the active lane control is working, and I can also see the three little strokes telling me that my blind spot monitor has detected a car over in back where I wouldn't be able to see. And of course, what trip would be complete without my trusty dash cam? The one time, the one time I didn't have it in a car, I got touched up, and not in a good way either, so don't you get laughing. You, don't you get laughing. Wasn't fun. Normally I enjoy getting touched up. And there it is, there's Mazda CX-5. I like this car a lot. As you heard, it's particularly quiet on the road. It's lovely to steer. Uh, some of the corners did feel a little bit odd, but maybe that's just because I need to get used to the car itself. It's got all-wheel drive and G-vectoring. You don't know what G-vectoring means either, do you? No, no. <laughs> uh, there's one in every room. So, would I buy a CX-5? Well, yes, if I wanted a small to medium SUV, I would. Remember, it's a crossover, not a full SUV. You're not gonna take this too far off the road. There's not enough ground clearance and there's no off-road programs. As always, subscribe, just, which camera? This one, this one, there. Am I not pointing off the screen? No. Oh, good.